we are here to present the case. Uh, a 25 year old male presented with chief complaints of pain in the right knee since 3 years, swelling since 2 years and occasionally associated with fever. History of present illness. Patient was apparently asymptomatic 3 years back and then he developed pain in the right knee which was insidious in onset, progressive in nature and pain is aggravated on walking and decreased on taking medication. The pain was also of dragging type. Swelling of knee since 2 years. Effusion is seen above the knee and is increased on exertion. Progressive in nature and slowly increased and reached the present size. Patient has difficulty in sitting cross-legged and squatting. Patient had no history of trauma, massages, no constitutional symptoms. Past history. No history of hypertension, diabetes, mellitus, tuberculosis, asthma, thyroid, epilepsy, coronary artery disease and chronic kidney disease. No history of blood dyscreasis. No history of drug allergies and no history of previous surgeries. Family history, not significant. Personal history, mixed diet, normal diet, regular bowel and bladder, no addictions and sleep is adequate. General examination, 25 years old male patient, he is conscious, conscious coherent and cooperative, moderately built, moderately nourished, no pallor, picturesque, clubbing, sinusis, lymphadenopathy and edema. Vitals, temperature ephemeral, blood pressure 120 by 80 mmHg, pulse rate 80 per minute and respiratory rate is 18 per minute. Systemic examination, cardiovascular system, S1 and S2 are good, respiratory system, bilateral paper entry is positive, per abdominal soft consistency and upon local examination of right knee, cadis, antalgic gate, inspection, anteriorly effusion is noted in the suprapatellar region extending medially and laterally. Mild quadriceps facing is seen, no visible scars, sinuses, engorged veins, visible, no visible pulsations. Laterally mild effusion is seen, posteriorly popliteal force is normal, palpation, inspectory findings are confirmed, no local rise of temperature, tenderness is present, patella tap is positive and fluctuation test is positive. Investigations X-ray, right knee aspiration, 90 ml of serous fluid is aspirated and sent for cytology and microbiology. Cytology showed scattered neutrophil and proteinaceous background. Microbiology culture showed no organisms. Gram stain smear showed no pus cells and no organisms. Acid fast staining did not show acid fast bacilli. X-ray uh, with the calcifications. And this is the CT scan with the calcifications of nodular calcifications. Provisional diagnosis, chronic synovitis, nodular synovitis, chronic tubercular synovitis. Specimen is surgery, arthroscopic synovial biopsy, right knee and synovectomy. The specimen is sent for histopathology. Histopathology reports uh, early white cartilage bits with fibrofatty tissue is seen. Grossly numerous round osteocartilaginous nodules are seen. And final diagnosis, synovial chondromatosis of right knee. Discussion. So, synovial chondromatosis is, is a rare metaplastic condition which is characterized by formation of cartilaginous bodies within the synovium and subsynovial connective tissue of the larger joints. There are three phases in the recurrences. Phase 1, active phase, metaplasia of the synovium with active synovity. Phase 2 is uh, transitional phase, active synovitis with formation of loose bodies. Phase 3 is uh, uh, resolution phase, loose bodies tend to calcify and synovitis subsides. Management is mainly surgical, open and arthroscopic procedures can be used to treat this condition. Synovectomy gives better results as compared to loose body removal alone. Complications, secondary is osteoarthritis, malignant transformation and recurrence. Pigmented villonodular synovitis, synovial hemangioma and lipoma arborescence are few conditions which mimic synovial chondromatosis. Conclusion, a rare case of synovial chondromatosis is described here because peculiarity is the presenting gauge. Thank you. My second time you say it is a rare case presenting in both my topic. So, you can find it. Go ahead. You can go to the calculated findings.
more local infrastructure, fatty gas tower, fluctuation test, we are getting more about the there's a presence of the fluid. Yes, at the gap, fluctuation. What is more important in this So consistency of the smelling which over the UC. What was the consistency? Or from even mentioned. Sinoil camera which is the growth of the in the sinoil, that means the top of the areas. That's the way you make a difference of the below and sinoil, which is more of a future. Because there the sinoil network is very small and excess of the fluid is put into the sinoil. It's basically present in the strength of the nipa, that is the sinoil fluid. Whereas the sinoil camera which is the meta picture, sinoil is transforming to the cortex, so it is far. So that's the thing done. Inspection. Oh, what do you have to do? What do you do this? Operated or more operated? Operated. Arthroscopy. Did you remove the cortex granules from the arthroscopy? And control those bodies will be there. Can you remove all those arthroscopy? See, sinoid chondromatosis is always you do open total sinoid because it is a very important postural aspect and there is no chance of the recurrence and there is no chance of the management. Even if you can recurrence the same as the third time also I can remove it. But there is no chance of the recurrence. By arthroscopy you cannot move the potential sinoid. So you go for a total open sinoid. Whereas below not the sinoid is more of because sinoid hypertrophy is very fragile tissue, you can remove from all the aspects. Okay, that's the difference. So that's why you have to get a clear diagnosis before you build. Okay? Thank you.